What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great week so far. It's Thursday, so the weekend's almost here. If you've been working hard, I hope you get an opportunity to just relax and unwind, spend some time with friends, family, by yourself, pets, whatever it is you do to kind of decompress from the week. I hope you get a chance to do that and just uh, really take care of yourself this weekend. So let's get into today's video. Um, I've already gone over my number five, number four, and number three favorite window managers. And again, I've said in another video that these could just be all my number one favorite window managers but you know for the sort of for the uh, sake of this series um, we've put them in order from five to one uh, number five was Spectre WM number four was DWM and number three was Xmonad if you haven't watched those videos I highly recommend you go check them out um, I've just got a few different opinions on each of them uh, what I like and don't like about them and um, maybe it could be a little helpful to you so again if you haven't checked those out go ahead and look at them number five number four number three they are in my window managers playlist on my channel on YouTube um, I also have uh, linked everything over to Odyssey, so you can now follow me on Odyssey or check out my content on Odyssey as well. Um, the link to that is in the About section of my YouTube uh, page or my YouTube channel, um, and it's also um, got a link on the banner of my YouTube channel to that Odyssey channel. So today we are going to get into number two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number two window manager is one that I have really fallen in love with. Um, in fact, it has been on my system for quite a while, um, but I haven't really spent a whole lot of time in it ever. Um, I never spent the time to really dig into it and customize it. I never spent the time to really figure out how it works. Um, and there was no reason for not doing that. It wasn't that I didn't like it. It just, I never really got around to it. Well, when I was working with Artix not too long ago, this was the window manager I chose to work with you know, solely. This is the only window manager I had on that system, and this is the only window manager I used, and I fell in love with it. And that window manager is Qtile. Um, if you're looking at my screen here, this is my Qtile setup. Um, I have thoroughly fallen in love with this window manager. Um, there is so much functionality to it, there is so much customizability to it, and it is so easy to use. Um, it is snappy, um, and it is definitely got everything that I look for in a window manager. So if you're looking right here, you can see I've got my bar across the top here, completely customizable. You can do so much with this bar. It's built in, so there's no um, using poly bar or any external bar to actually go in and configure and do all this stuff. It's all right in the same configuration file, keeps things nice and compact, um, and you can just do so much with it. Um, if you look right here, you can see my layout is monad tall. If I hit mod tab, that's max, and then ratio tile, and then floating, and then matrix, and then zoomy, and then back to monad tall. Now, Monad Tall is the master and stack layout, which I've said before that this is my layout of choice. I usually don't have a whole lot of windows open on my, or uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, windows open on each workspace um, because I don't like a cluttered screen, but when I choose to have more than one, I prefer to have the uh, master and stack layout um, because it's just so much easier to actually kind of, for my brain to wrap around, I guess. Um, the one thing about this is the master and stack layout on Qtile is a 50-50 split. Now, whether that's changeable or not, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. You can, however, uh, change the size of the windows. So if we do mod H and L, you can see it shrinks and grows windows. Um, if we go over here to J and do H, it shrinks and grows. So you can shrink and grow and make things how you want them as you spawn them, but just naturally spawning everything it splits 50 50 now again if we do mod tab this gives me a max and then if i do this we've got ratio tile uh, we got floating we have matrix we have zoomy and then we're back to monad tall so again lots of different um layouts available on this window manager uh, i don't use 90 percent of them i do obviously have more than just the one on there um, but that's just because um, i wanted to show a bit of the functionality of this window manager um, so it's got all that um, i have scratch pad functionality if you look here i can launch a um, terminal scratch pad i can launch my launch menu scratch pad i can launch my close menu scratch pad and I believe I have one more. What is it? Uh, we'll go through it in the configuration file here in a minute. Um, but I can have my scratch pads that I so desperately need on my systems. Uh, so that's another great functionality of this uh, window manager. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration file. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch a terminal here. And we're going to zoom in and we're going to CD into Qtile. 
And you can see Qtile configuration file is located at homejake.config Qtile. And then if we do an ls in that, we have right here, we have autostart.sh, and then we have config.py. That's the one we want to get into. So config.py. Uh, actually, if we want to vim into it. <laughs> uh, boy, uh, I'm not having a good morning. So we're going to vim into config.py. Now up here we've got all the stuff that we need to import to do um, some of this functionality. So uh, we're going to import libqtile from qtile. We need um, socket. We need OS. Um, we need the libqtile.config to have click and drag to have group functionality, keys, match, screen, scratch pad, and drop down. So these are all different things that we need this for. Um, we have bar and widget here. So we need the uh, libqtile. We need to import bar, widget, and layout, and hook. Um, so you just need to go through, and there's a few things you need to import. This is all covered in the documentation, which we'll get to in a second, which in my opinion is spectacular. Um, then down here we have the mod mod key setting which is mod one for all uh, my terminal is alacrity my browser is the brave browser stable which is just brave browser and my logout menu is uh kitty dash e uh, and then my logout so if we're looking down here we then have the key bindings now key bindings are set up a little differently you got the key and then mod and then whatever key you're taking or the shift or controller whatever other modifier key you want and then you have to um set it up just kind of like this. So the setting up a key binding is a little bit more, uh, I guess, intensive than doing something like in SimpleX Hotkey Daemon, where it's just really super simple. So that is kind of a downside to um, Qtile is the key bindings are a little bit more, con I don't want to say convoluted, but there's a little bit more to adding a key binding than just adding a key binding like in simple hex at simple x hockey daemon um, we have groups here for the windows uh, all my workspaces you can see are numbered here so we have the numbers here you can change the different layout per workspace if you want which is kind of cool so if i wanted like uh zoomy here and i wanted max on here i would just have to change that from monad tall and then whenever i went to that workspace that's the window layout that would be operating on that workspace down here I have my scratch pads set up. Um, I do have a video on setting these up, uh, Qtile scratch pads. So go ahead and check that out. Um, down here we have the themes. So we have the border width of one, uh, margin of four, border focus color, and border normal color. Um, these are the different kind of layouts. These are my colors here for my bar, for my Qtile bar here. And then we get into the widgets, which is what makes up each individual uh, point in this bar. Um, so if you come down here, we have different the separators. Um, and what's cool is like you can do a widget text box and you can put a shape here. You can put just about anything you want here if it's a font icon, um, which gives me this nice kind of angled look here, which I think is kind of cool looking. Um, you can do... Um, built-in widgets which there's tons of built-in widgets for this thing but you can also do um, your own widgets which if we go down and let's see here where do we have right here this widget dot gen pull text for YouTube subs this actually just runs a script that I have that gives me the output of my YouTube subs and then down here I have another widget dot gen pull text for mail and that runs my mail check script which tells me how many new emails I have so there's just so much you can do with this bar. It's completely customizable. It's completely configurable. You can have built-in widgets. You can make your own widgets. You can just do really whatever you want with this thing. And it's really cool. Um, so the customizability and the availability of things to do on Qtile, it, there's no shortage of it. It is just an amazingly configurable window manager. The fact that it's all contained in one configuration file is nice on one hand, but on the other hand, like I've said before, I haven't gotten into whether or not I can break this configuration file up. Um, I might be able to, I haven't looked into that yet, but I do like to be able to kind of separate things out. So if I'm looking for key bindings, I know I can go straight to this file. And if I'm looking for uh, layouts or themes, I can just go straight to another file. So the ability to be able to do that would be kind of cool, whether I can or not, I don't know yet. Um, but uh, we're going to look into that. Um, another thing, if you look over here in my uh, file explorer, you can see that I've got uh, void blue dot PNG void underscore PNG. Um, these here, and then I've got uh, qtile.png. These you can display PNG uh, pictures or icons or what it files right up here. Like I have the void logo right here and I have the Qtile logo over here. Now, if I click on the void logo, um, it's actually going to go ahead and launch me a terminal, which is kind of cool. 
Um, I don't have anything set up on the kill. Oh, I do have it set up to launch a terminal as well. I think that's just because I copied the <laughs> the widget for that one. But you can see you can make everything clickable. So um, if I clicked on, uh, um, do I have that set up yet? No, I don't have the mail set up or that set up. But you can make these clickable, which is really cool. So that way you can have functionality when you click on them to maybe open your email or to um, open your calendar or whatever. So that's pretty cool. So after that, then we get down here and we just have um, some of the layout rules. Um, we have um, we're setting wallpaper right here. If you go to the screen section, you can actually set your wallpaper without having to use an external tool like nitrogen or X wallpaper or something like that. You can actually just set it straight in your Qtile configuration file, which is really cool. So again, Qtile, customizability, configuration file, uh, both pluses the configuration file kind of a plus and a minus just due to some of the stuff being a little bit more difficult um, or a little bit more in depth than just doing something like simplex hotkey daemon for programming keys and um, so great customizability nice configuration file let's go to documentation documentation on qtile is where it's at um, i know you'll have people complaining about the documentation saying yeah it's okay you gotta know some python or whatever well in all reality don't you want to? If you're running a program and you're trying to configure it, don't you want to kind of understand how things are going? So yeah, I don't really see you have to understand a bit of Python to be able to understand the documentation as a downfall. I kind of see it as a benefit because it makes you learn and understand what's going on. Now, I know there's people that just want to say, oh, I just want to set it up and have it work. Well, okay, you can. You can run Qtile straight out of the box, straight as it, straight as it is, without messing with anything, and it'll work just fine. Um, but if you want to understand how it works, yeah, you got to dig a little bit into Python, and you got to go through the, the uh, documentation and kind of understand what it's doing. Um, Qtile's documentation is great. If you go to qtile.org, we have the main page here. Um, gives you a little uh, ben little tips and benefits of using the window manager, optimizing workflow, efficient use of screen real estate, uh, save your risk from repetitive stress injury, RSI. Uh, why Qtile? Qtile is simple, small, and extensible. It's written and configured entirely in Python. Qtile community is active and growing, and it's free and open source software. So they have an IRC channel, a mailing list, a Twitter. There's an issue tracker, and you can hack on the code right here. Um, now, if you come up here to the top, we can go to screenshots. And what's kind of cool is they give you a section that has just some screenshots. Some of them have a little link that says view config, so you can actually click on them and go to that configuration file. Um, some of them, they don't work anymore. but So that gives you that. There's a section called videos. There's not a whole lot here. I think they need to do a little catching up because like this one here, PyCon 2011. A little behind the times on that one, but uh, there's a couple videos you can check out. Then we get to the documentation. The documentation is spectacular. It got it has just about everything you could think of, from installing and configuring to troubleshooting, using it as as a Wayland compositor. You do shell commands. You got built-in extensions, built-in hooks, built-in layouts, built-in widgets default configuration file. You can advance, you have advanced scripting done on it, getting involved so you can hack on Qtile, you can contribute. Um, we've got frequently asked questions, the license, you've got some how to create a widget, uh, tips and tricks, using Git tips and tricks, you've got the index. And if you click on any one of these, like let's say widgets, let's click on the widgets and we're going to go over here and look at this list of widgets that are built in for Qtile. Now there's a ton of these. But again, you can build your own widgets as well. So if we go back, um, you have a section down under tips and trips, how to create a widget. So this gives you the base on how to create a widget. Now I found that with Qtile, the configuration file got a little bit confusing at times, like I said, because you do need to know a little bit about Python, but then you come over here and if you just search the docs um, and you type in what you're looking for in there, it is so well done that you can find just about anything you need to find and if you have a bit of a grasp as to what's going on you shouldn't have an issue figuring out how to fix it that being said if you do have an issue even going through the docs you can go to the IRC channel you can go to the forums you can go just about anywhere and there's people using Qtile there's people who love Qtile and there's people who are willing to help you figure out what is going on it is a great window manager it has a great community and it has great documentation the downsides to Qtile are one that the configuration file was a little bit more in-depth than some of the stuff than something simple 
And to be honest with you, that's about it for downsides for me on Qtile. I love this window manager. I have thoroughly enjoyed using it and I'm spending about as much time in this one now as I am in my number one choice, which we'll get to in the next couple days or so. So that being said, if you're looking for a great window manager, something that's easy to use, something that's going to be quick and something that has great documentation and great community built around it, Qtile is definitely a way to go. I would recommend it to a beginner. I would recommend it to an intermediate. I'd recommend it to an advanced. This is a great window manager. This is a great program, and this is a great community. Uh, the guys who uh, built this and created Qtile should be very proud of themselves. They have created a great project and a great program. That being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Um, I'm planning to get one more video out, maybe two out before Christmas, before the break hits. Um, so that being said, just keep an eye out for my number one. It's coming. Uh, some of you might know what it is already. Some of you might not, but uh, it's on its way. So that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Great rest of your week. Get some good rest this weekend. God bless.